alive? Are we living? Are we alive? Are we alive? All right. Well, it looks like we're alive. Welcome, everybody, to the Wednesday edition of the Mike Myers live stream, Ask Mike Anything. The goal of this live stream is to provide those of us who are isolated by the coronavirus an opportunity to continue our studies for CompTIA certifications. So the system works pretty much like this. All you do is you type questions into the live chat and I'll answer them. And if I don't have the answer, Jack the Attack Cat here will help out. Uh, we also have Scott Jernigan. Uh, often we've got Dave Rush. I'm not sure if Dave's on today or not. Uh, and then on top of that, we have the rogues gallery of regulars who show up and are some pretty good techs in and of themselves. So um, anyway, welcome aboard. So anyway, here's how this works. So we start at 2 o'clock Central Standard Time, and we go till 4 o'clock or until the questions run out. So it's completely up to you guys. Uh, I'm here uh, up till 4 o'clock or unless we run out of questions. So sometimes we stop a little early. We've been known to run a little late, too. Jack, I'm so glad to see you decided to join us today, brother. Hi, Kitty Five. High Five. No, cat won't do that. Completely untrained cat. Anyways, you can see the negotiations have worked out fine, and Jack is back on the air with me. I don't tell this cat to come here, okay? I sit down, and then sometimes he shows up and sometimes he doesn't. So I guess he's feeling photogenic today. All right, so if you're going to ask me questions, there's two ways to do it. Number one, just type it into the chat, but also keep in mind that for a lot of folks, uh, the question might be complicated or you're embarrassed to ask a question, things like that. That's perfectly fine. I understand. In that case, send me an email. Uh, all you have to do is send an email to michaelm at totalsem.com, and I will check out your email and uh, be, hopefully be able to give you the answers. Uh, also, if you're a gamer, I am Senor Pepe on Steam. And if you want to find out anything about me, just do a search on Desweds and who knows what's going to pop up. All right, so that's the basic format here. Uh, oh, Dave is here. I see. Hey, Dave Rush. There you go. I see you now. Let's see if you have some newer names here. Oh, good, good, good. Ahmed Ali, uh, Daniel Makaya, uh, the usual rogues are here, Patricia and Andre and WebDev and Alan... Falak is here. <laughs> are you done, Zach? Jack? What are you doing, buddy? All right, make up, make up my mind. All right. Alice Potsy is here very early. What's going on? Because I've got some bad questions for Mike. Sorry, I need to move on with my net plus. Well, that's what we're here for, Alice. Feel free to ask away. Uh, oh, goodness, she comes right into it. 201, Alice Potsy. Can you explain in a four dummies format, isn't that everything I do? Uh, the concept of inside local, inside global, outside global, outside global IPs. Okay, Alice, one thing I can tell for sure is you're studying with somebody else's materials other than mine. Uh, inside local inside global outside i am not familiar with those terms which i think speaks volumes right there scott dave you going to take a shot at that one i guess we're talking about ipv6 addresses i'm doing a quick web search Oh, good Lord, this is NAT stuff. Now, Alice, I can tell you right now, you're not going to see this type of terminology on a CompTIA exam. That doesn't mean that it's wrong. It just means that you're not going to see it. But now you got me interested. Just reading, bear with me a minute. Hang on, Jack. Okay. So inside local addresses, I've just grabbed a arbitrary website. In, inside local are, this all has to do with NAT. This is not IPv6. The global had me fooled. 
Private addresses that the company can't control. So in a typical network, a NATed router that's going to be your 192, 168s, or whatever you configure the LAN side of your router to be. Inside global addresses, public addresses that the company can control. Wow, an example is the IP address provides to the organization. I don't like this, Alice. Because it doesn't make sense. This is all Cisco garbage. All right, tell you what, I'm going to save this one. Alice, this is a good question, but it's going to take me and the boys to do a little bit of R&D on it, so I'm going to hold tight on that one. Da -da -da -da. I mean, I can kind of, I could read this and it sort of makes sense, but I think we need a better definition. Scott's giving me good info here too. What do we got? Hmm. All right, I'm just reading, guys. All right, Alice, we're gonna, I'm going to have to save it for Monday, Alice. It's a good one, but it's, uh, these are not common terms to any certification, nor is it a common term that I would use in the general discussion of networking. I don't know why people always have to make NAT harder than it has to be. All right, so where are you getting these questions, Alice? Let's see what else we got. Alice Potsy, difference between 202 PM, PIM sparse mode and PIM dense mode. This is multicast stuff. Uh, man, again, you're doing, this is, Alex, it almost sounds like you're studying for a CCNA, uh, Amiga, because, uh, I'm just reading. I'm 0 for 2, man. Keeping me honest here today. Wow. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, okay. Sure. Uh, let's go ahead to the next one. Alex, I'm sorry, babe. I'm, I'm going to, I've got them documented. We'll talk about both of those. But one more time, these two topics will not appear on a CompTIA exam that I'm aware of. So keep that in mind. But it's still interesting stuff. I'm not anti-Cisco. It's just that unfortunately I can't throw a lot of Cisco stuff off the top of my head uh, like I can with other things. Justin Miller, 202 PM. Can you explain administrative distance and their purpose? Sure. Okay, uh, when you're using a routing protocol, uh, administrative distance, I think that is OSPF protocol. Scott, can you double check me on that one? So with administrative distance under OSPF, what you're trying to do is you're trying to give some kind, it's, it's an arbitrary number, okay? The number itself doesn't mean much unless you compare it to the uh, administrative distances of other routes on the network. And it's used by OSPF, by the area, the OSPAF, OSPF area calculation to determine the fastest route. That's it, that's all it means. Um, used to see this back, uh, you still see it in uh, like with older protocols like RIP and things like that, I believe it's just called cost, but it's basically the same thing. The, the idea is that with RIP, when they talked about cost, what they were trying to do is like give an idea, to, if you had two routes and one was cheap and one was expensive, you could make the router go through the cheaper route if you wanted to. 
but that price isn't so much an issue anymore as latency and things like that. So uh, it's just used, it's a tool used by the folks configuring routes and it's an arbitrary value. Rafi Melkonian, hello, Saturday 2201002 exam. Good luck to you, man. Network mage, that's always scary. 2.03 p.m. Uh, hi, is Server Plus still relevant today or is Cloud Plus the one to get now? If I had to choose between Server Plus and Cloud Plus, I would, ch I would choose Cloud Plus. Um, Mike is like a VPN. We just give him things to Google. Well, the, the problem is, is a lot of times when you guys give me a question, what I, I, there's two ways. Well, first, I have to know the answer. And as you can see today with poor Alice, I'm 0 for 2 on her. Uh, but a lot of times I can do a quick search and see a context of what people are talking about. And then once I have that context, I can usually do a pretty good job of getting them where they want to go. So, yes, I do a lot of double checking and searching on here. Somali. Hey, Mike. Hey, Somali. <laughs> Thomas Robinson. Hey, Mike. Hey, Thomas. <laughs> no, Alice, uh, don't say sorry. I'm just, I'm sorry I don't have those answers right in front of you. Uh, I... I can be doing enough Cisco to be dangerous, but. So Alice, I do have a question for you and I'd like you to type this in, please. In fact, I'm gonna stop until you respond. Alice, are you studying for a CompTIA certification right now? Alice Potsy, type something. How slow is the internet in Italy, man? Come on. Oh well, she'll she'll catch up. All right. Uh, bum, bum, bum. <laughs> Get back on track here. Daniel Micaiah, hello, Mike. You referred me here today from LinkedIn. Glad we can actually interact live. Hey, Daniel, yeah. So basically, anytime someone interacts with me on LinkedIn, I send them a link to the uh, live stream. So welcome aboard, my friend. Kaylin Angel, hey, Mike, I'm from, I'm from Belize. Some of the best scuba diving I've ever done in my life was in Belize, the blue hole. And I, uh, I wanna start out with the A plus certification. Is there any steps for me to take in relation to finding exam centers close to me? Yeah, just go to uh, www.com. Uh, so Kaylin, you say I'm from Belize. Does that mean you are in Belize right now? Uh, by coincidence, I've had someone else ask me about Belize. Belize does have testing centers. Uh, Let's here, comp, oh, no, it's going to be Prometric. Okay, so, uh, Kaylin, you, you want to go to Prometric.com, P-R-O-M-E-T-R-I, Prometric.com. Scott, save me. Test takers. Yeah, go to Prometric.com, and uh, they will give you the information you need to find yourself a testing center. And I am confident, but not positive, that they are there. Also, overseas, um, da -da -da -da. Scott says that administrative distance applies to RIP. I'm going to disagree with that. But he says it also applies to BGP. And now that I think about it, yes, administrative distance also applies to BGP. I'd forgotten that one, Scott. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
Network Mage, 2.10 p.m. Career question. If I wanted to specialize in BGP networking, oof, uh, only as a career, as opposed to a hobby I'm teasing, uh, how hard are these jobs to get? I'm assuming they are all in the big ISPs like Cox and AT&T. Well, mostly, yeah. Um, and that'd be the place you'd be looking for it. Uh, larger enterprises that have BGP interfaces, there's up to like, I forget, 70,000 assigned uh, ASIN numbers now. So there's going to be more than just uh, ISPs uh, providing that. But it, that would definitely be the way you'd be thinking. And Network Mage, you pretty much might as well just start go Cisco path because they're all going to assume it. Even if they don't use Cisco equipment, they'll assume you speak Cisco. She's breaking for lunch. Okay, hey Mike, what is the difference between peep, eep fast, and EAP TTLS, thank you. Uh, okay, uh, so these are all uh, EAP protocol that usually when you see these, <coughs> you're normally gonna be talking about very high-end authentication on 802.11 networks. Doesn't have to be, but I mean, it wasn't really designed for that, but that seems to be where people do it more often than not. And so the nice part about EAP protocol with 802.11 is that you can choose a lot of ways to handle your authentication. So if, if you think about regular authentication with uh, 802.11, most of us just use personal shared key or PSK, right? Well, when you move to enterprise level, opportunities open up. And uh, so EAP is basically just a framework that allows a authenticating process and a client to talk to each other to negotiate. Uh, EAP is not too terribly dissimilar from, uh, for example, like a TLS handshake, where you begin by negotiating what you can do to make that happen. So you can use username, passwords, you can use certificates on just the server, you can have certificates on the client and the server. Uh, there's about four different ways to handle username and password. And when you're, so when you're talking about PEEP, EAP FAST, and EAP TTLS, you're just talking about different ways that a uh, client can negotiate with an authenticating server to decide how they're going to do things. PEEP is probably the easiest. Uh, PEEP is just uh, uh, username and password based. Uh, the username and password is typically stored on the authenticating server. Uh, this is usually something you'll see on RADIUS setups. Uh, but it's just a username and password. Uh, EAP TTLS, oh, I always get T EAP TLS and EAP TTLS backwards. Somebody double check me. Scott, I always forget. Uh, so EAP TTLS means there is only a server side certificate for authentication. And EAP TLS means that there's both a server side and a client side certificate for authentication. And EAP fast, I used to know what that was. Pretty sure it's just another. Oh, okay, that's right. I remember now. So, uh, with with Cisco, their primary form of point-to-point -point or wireless authentication was called LEAP, Lightweight Extensible Authentication Protocol. And unfortunately, they found some uh, vulnerabilities with it. This is years ago. And replaced it with EAP FAST. EAP FAST uh, does a, uh, trans a TLS tunnel, which is established using protected access credentials. So basically what it boils down to is it's going to be uh, a username and password based, but it's going to be done over TLS. So you've got uh, TLS, you're going to have a server side uh, certificate on that. 
and then you're still going to have to type in with a username and password. The only time you're going to be using EAP fast is if you're working with a Cisco network because I don't know anybody else who uses it. So Alice, you're on Network Plus. I'm going to, Alice, I'm curious where those questions came from. Uh, 213, Tyler R. Hey, Tyler R. I just wanted to say thanks again oh, for making your videos. I got my first good job a month ago. Big round of applause to you. Helped me a ton getting the trifecta. Okay, Alice, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, the one, I, again, Alice, I can tell you for sure those questions aren't on the Net Plus unless there's been a change that I'm unaware of, and I doubt that happened. Uh, but uh, we'll see. Debbie Strouch. Hey, Mike. Hey, Debbie. Da, 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 da. And Alice, it's a great idea to use material from multiple sources. I, I, I think that's a wonderful idea. You just, you kind of stumped me today a little bit. Two fifteen p.m. Matteo Gomez, I was doing A plus, but just doing it for the knowledge. Nothing wrong with that. I really want to do security plus on these certifications. If you want to do security, do you have to do the other ones? No, you don't. Uh, there are with CompTIA, there are no prerequisites for anything. In my opinion, you should not go into security plus without having a network plus. The uh, if you use my training materials, I assume you have a network plus or equivalent knowledge. I backtrack a little bit, but it's just somebody coming in cold into security plus, and then I still have to teach them IP addressing and subnets and port numbers. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. So you don't have to. If you want to, you can go straight to security plus. It's been done, but I would strongly recommend network plus even if you don't go for the cert. Jason Helms, 219, what's going on? It's, it sound, looks like it's a quiet day today. We're allowed to have quiet days. Connor Wellman, Mike, have you read about the new M1 chip and will it really revolutionize the, revolutionize the market? Uh, I have not really drilled down on all the tech specs on the M1 yet. I know Apple sure talks it up. Uh, you know, the whole idea of moving to a system on a chip is interesting. It definitely should uh, make some power reduction. Dave Rush on the TTLS. Thank you for double checking me. I always get those mixed up. Uh, but, uh, no, the honest answer is, Connor, I have not drilled it down too hard. Uh, if it doesn't sit on a machine that runs Windows or Linux, I tend not to pay a lot of attention to it. So, uh, usually Michael Smyre from our office, if there's something particularly noteworthy, he'll, he'll tend to bring it up or make some links. So, I have not looked into it. Uh, I will also tell you that I've heard about so many chips that were going to revolutionize the industry and none of them have yet. They're all you know, evolutionary, not revolutionary. Plus, I'm mad at Apple these days. They're really starting to gouge people. All right, uh, 2.20 p.m., Carrie Watkins. Hey, Carrie, your new name, aren't you? Hey, Mike, how important is it to get recertified for CompTIA Plus if it's going to change again in about two or three years? Well... The first thing you got to remember is that pretty much every IT certification requires you to update it. It's not unique to CompTIA. In fact, what's unique to CompTIA is that for decades, they made the a certification a lifetime certification, which I think eventually started to bite them in the rear end because uh, uh, ISO and other uh, standards organizations like that didn't like that idea because technology changes so quickly. Um, so how important is it to get recertified? In my opinion, 
I don't think you should get recertified. I think you should be, if you get the A plus, then you should be moving on to Net plus or Security plus or moving towards your Cisco certifications or moving towards your Microsoft certifications. I know CompTIA probably doesn't like me saying this. Uh, somebody like me, I get recertified because I teach this stuff. Or if somebody's you know in a depot tech or something like that, then recertification might be a good thing. But in general, in my opinion, the best thing you can do is you, you want to gain more skills and you want to grow. And that being the case, I would always say, just go ahead and uh, don't panic about the recertification. That being said, I will also tell you that CompTIA does a pretty good job of giving you lots of different ways to re-up more than just taking an exam. And you need to head over to comptia.org and uh, we should have that link. Uh, we should have that link laying around somewhere, Scott. Uh, the uh, continuing education requirements. Uh, you can do all kinds of attending seminars, all kinds of things like that, which will allow you to get recertified without having to take the test again. You can also take more advanced CompTIA exams and that re-ups your lower exams. I'm not gonna say exactly what it is because I always forget, but head over to www.comptia.org and check it out. They often give lots of good deals on that. But in general, I'd rather see you moving on to more aggressive certifications. Two twenty one PM, Rich Reed. Hey Mike, a question. If a job posting asks for A plus, but you have net plus sec plus, would you would that substitute it? Maybe is the only way to describe it. If you're talking about there's a job where you're going to be, you know, breaking down and reassembling laptops all day, then the net plus security plus will not replace it and that could be an issue. Um, you could also get away with saying, well, if you knew your systems, uh, first of all, always apply for all jobs, okay? Don't self-limit yourself on jobs. Always apply, okay? Always apply. But if they're asking for A+, and you have Net Plus, Security Plus, I would be tempted to say things in the interview, assuming you get in, it's like, oh, you know, I was pretty comfortable with that. So A plus, so I just moved ahead and I did net plus and security plus instead. See if they buy it. The most important thing is don't self limit. Go ahead and apply for that job. That's the most important thing. Yeah, I've got bad news on the Raspberry Pi department. My new Raspberry Pi 4. It got kicked by one of the cleaning ladies and my USB-C connector shattered. And it's in parts. I ain't got no, I ain't got no Raspberry Pi, very frustrating. Uh, it got, it got drop kicked pretty hard. So I'll probably get Dave Rush with his soldering skills to come in and fix it for me. Here, I can hear Dave Rush right now. Mike, a new Raspberry Pi 4 is cheaper than me getting it soldered. Am I right, Dave? 221, Rich Reed. Uh, oh, we got that one already. Okay, Dave Rush is telling Jason, uh, Dave's gonna be installing Kali Linux on Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pis on Friday. Wow, Dave, what are you going to do? You're going to let, uh, you're going to install Ra Kali and they're going to plug these into their networks and they're going to do dangerous things. Be careful, kids. Kali is a very powerful distribution with lots of powerful tools in it. Halakon, TLS needs both, but TTLS is server only. I think we got that ironed out. Elbow, any super quick ways to speed up the transfer over wireless LAN? Yeah, move to 802.11ax, brother, and put lots and lots of channels on there. 
no, there is no, no, there is no fast way. I mean, first of all, do you know that it's slow, elbow? I mean, what, what's telling you you want to speed it up? Are you trying to transfer, you know, 100 terabyte files? Yeah, those could take a while. Um, there's a thousand things you can do to speed up a wireless network. Uh, probably one of the first ones I would do is, uh, if you can, let's say you have 802.11 AC network, go into your router settings, your wireless access point settings, sorry. Turn off legacy support. That will speed things up. Uh, you can also, if you're not in a very noisy area, you can uh, make your uh, channel bandwidth higher. I wouldn't make it more than 40 megahertz, but you can, uh, or, or leave it set to auto. And uh, so it'll make the channels actually wider. Those would be the two things. The other thing is, is how hard are you making this poor wireless access point work? You got 37,000 people in there all on that SSID. The fastest way you can speed things up is unhook people. Uh, and then finally, the other big thing is wireless is great, but I still do everything via Ethernet. Uh, I, if it's really important, I, I still be, I'm still plugged in. Jason Elms. Uh, 2.28 p.m. Mike, if the passing score is 6.75 and you score 6.18, how bad of a miss is that? Eh, uh, you, you, you're, you, it's, a, it's, a, it's not terrible, but you should be doing better than that. Um, yeah, you, you, need, you need to keep studying, man. Yeah, so I got to tell you, uh, on the Raspberry Pi that I've been using as home theater, I've been getting a little disappointed with it. Uh, I mean, it works. Um, the challenge that I've been running into is heat. Uh, this little Raspberry Pi 4, and I've got a clear cable for it. I wish I'd have brought it over. Uh, a clear case for it, and uh, it came with this little teeny tiny, look like a, I don't know, three centimeter fan and I just I didn't even bother putting it in and anyways while I'm running it I didn't know this I'd never seen this at least the raspberries in the upper right hand corner give a temperature warning and then I get occasional reboots so should I get this raspberry pie fixed and move it back into the home theater world and Dave I did see your offer thank you for that I'm probably just gonna come up with a better cooling solution the other thing that I'm really seriously considering doing is this gives me an excuse to build a proper home theater system. I've got a great case, and uh, I could just slide a new ITX board in there and get that cooking. But the Raspberry is pretty cool. I, my problem is, is I run it too hard, and I keep it too hot. But, I mean, in terms of playback and everything, it's fine. When it, as long as it doesn't overheat, that's the only trick. Oh, Dave, but you don't have to give me a new res. Right? I can have one shipped here faster. Six thirty already. I may, you know what? I may, Dave. If you don't care, I may sneak in on uh, Friday and listen to what you're going to be telling these guys. Are you just going to teach them how to install Kali, or are you then going to go in and? Have them do Metasploit or something like that. Oh, lots more text. I know it's slow because sending a four megabyte photo takes almost a minute. All right, well, those are the things I'd be looking at. Uh, honestly, Elbow, the thing I'd be checking more than anything else is who else is using your wireless. So, well, it's like, well, Mike, how do I stop people from getting on my wireless network? Well, 
you know, a lot of routers now, uh, these Soho routers have multiple SSIDs. Keep your own little SSID. You can even turn the other one off temporarily if you're really in the middle of it. I don't know who else is using your wireless network, but they might get crabby for a minute. What's with the pirate hat, Mike? Uh, Scott Jernigan, why are you asking questions? Uh, it was a uh, Renaissance Fair thing. I don't have any easy access to Mike in his pirate's costume, but I looked yar good. it. You can speed up the transfer by copying the files to a USB drive. Four gig? Yeah, you, depending on how physically close the systems are. You back, Jack? Nitrous Music, 2.32 p.m. Artist. That's yeah, the funny way you say artist. I remember the first time... Uh, when my books really started to sell and people were like, so what, what, what's, what, what's your occupation? And I was like, I'm an aw, aw, author. It was kind of hard for me to put it in there. I should say Mike Myers, author. Following you on last live. Took the two to one. Got a 499 nitrous music. Oh, first of all, very sorry to hear that. Nitrous Music, remember, number one, failing a certification exam is not, uh, it's inconvenient and it costs money, that's true, but it, it's no big deal. Nobody cares. It's not like taking the SAT or A-levels or something like that. You just go take them again. I fail about one-third of all the certification exams I take. Uh, so I am sorry that you failed. Uh, you definitely need the practice questions more than anything else. Um, and in fact, on top of that nitrous music, you should probably consider uh, more than one source for practice questions. They are key more than anything else. And speaking of practice questions, nitrous music, I know you're feeling kind of low right now. Uh, just because you guys are nice enough to show up today, we're offering 50% off of our... Buh, 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 Where'd it go? There it is. Uh, practice questions. 50% uh, off all A+, plus, Net+, plus, and Security+, plus on our website. All you have to do is go to www.totalsem, T-O-T-A-L-S-E-M.com. Head over to the merchant area, get all your fat loot in your cart, and before you check out, just type in NOV092020. Scott Jernigan will put that all up. So you guys can see that, you'll know what's happening. And uh, you get 50% off. Now, I think we have the best practice questions out there. I think we have the cheapest already of the good practice questions out there. And we give them for 50% off. And uh, yeah, you definitely would want to take advantage of that. Scott Jernigan is sending me information. Miss 220, who did I, I wouldn't say I was missing him, Bob. Kemet96. Hiya, Mike. Could you let me know your two email addresses? Sure. Uh, why don't I give you one email address? How's that sound, Kemet? Right there. That's me, man. Michael M at totalsem.com. I guarantee you I'll get it there. So I've been I usually complain, well not complain, I just react on the fact that I get a lot of emails every day and sometimes I miss the emails, but uh, for some reason, I have received almost no email uh, either yesterday or today. Maybe nobody wants to talk to me anymore, I don't know what it is. Kem at michaelemmattotalsem.com, I guarantee you I'll get it.
Okay, 2.35 p.m., Benjamin Galindo. Hey, Benjamin. In Viola, Wisconsin here. Viola. I just got the Google IT cert, okay? And I'm going after the A-plus next. Any advice would be awesome. Oh, gosh, so much, so much good advice there. Uh, here, I'll start off with a, a really important one here. You ready? Benjamin, you need to... Uh, Schedule the exam as soon as you can. The reason I've stressed that is because I, if you don't schedule the exam, 50% of us will fiddle around and not actually take the test. Nobody should need more than three months to study. Uh, it really depends on how many hours you can study per day. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know you at all in terms of that. If you had my book, it has a big thing in the front that helps you calculate the number of hours you need to study and the types of stuff you need to study and things like that. But that would be the big thing. Get disciplined. Use certain times of the day as study time and study. And get this sucker knocked out. Rich Reed, I just got a new AX router. It's so much faster than my N1. Uh, if there was, you know, people say bad things about a lot of different flavors of 802.11. I had the biggest trouble with 802.11n. I had the least trouble with 802.11g, followed closely by probably AC. Uh, 2.35 p.m. Mark Wheeler, I have a question. I got my VirtualBox Ubuntu to work on my Mac after I disabled the audio in the VirtualBox session. <laughs> I... Mark again, buddy. I apologize. I just I don't run Apple platform stuff very often, and uh, I don't know why. This is what I call you turn on the light switch and the toilet flushes. Um, these bizarro things. Uh, number one, if that's the actual thing you did, great. Uh, number two, a lot of times, if I had my magic Star Star Trek transporter and I was right next to you. You may have done something else on your way to do that. Uh, was there documentation that said turn off the sound? Uh, I don't even know how Mac works with the uh, VirtualBox extensions, so I'm a little bit in the dark on that. No, I don't have a clue. It's magic, man. It's freaking magic. Uh, 2.36 p.m. B-Rush. Hey, Mike, quick question. Does each IT department in their respective companies have their own best practices? And if so, is it considered against policy if you handle the situation your own way? Most best practices documents in terms of the act actions and activities of IT support staff are taken from boilerplates that uh, here in the United States come from the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST. Do not ask me what freaking document number. It's one of the 800 series numbered documents and they basically have a bunch of boilerplates that everybody copies from uh, best you know acceptable use policies all kinds of stuff like that uh, so yeah they they should have their own best practices uh, and if they don't uh, then um, often best practices can a lot of times just be verbal you know in terms of how we do stuff um, is it considered against policy if you handle the situation your own way? Yeah, probably. It would be against policy. Did it work? Is everybody happy? Did the company make money or not lose money? I've discovered that in capitalist societies, uh, people who break rules successfully uh, are often uh, rewarded, whereas a lot of times these acceptable use policies and uh, things like this are really just cover your rear end type things. Whereas if you do something that's really naughty and it doesn't work well, though, then they can slam you and fire you and all that kind of stuff. E. White, 237, more new Pirates of the Caribbean. Yar, 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 a pirate's life for me. You better, never been to Disneyland or Disney World? Come on. <laughs> Although I will tell you, on December 7th this year, we will be reenacting the Battle of Pearl Harbor. 
December 7th, 1941, when the Japanese bombed the American naval base at Pearl Harbor. We will be recreating the Battle of Pearl Harbor wearing Santa suits. Yep, it's a tradition we do almost every year. Uh, I, once again, will probably be representing the USS Nevada, which capsized, so I can do downward facing dog and everybody gets a big laugh out of it. It's hilarious. Let's just say it's not a very accurate recreation of the Battle of Pearl Harbor because we're all wearing Santa suits that have wine stains and tears and dirt. And it's a thing, okay? What can I tell you guys? All right, Kevin. Kevin Lopez, 237. Mike, I see that your Windows Server 2016 course on Udemy is on sale. Would that be good to learn, or is there a more up-to-date server course? Uh, honestly, for, it would be very good to learn. Uh, I, oh, goodness, Scott, who is our talent for server 2016? I forget. It's a lady. I forgot her name. Uh, yeah, it's a good course. The, problem, the only downside is, is that it's, not, it's really just an Active Directory course more than anything else. Uh, and if that's the aspect that you want to learn about server, it would be great. I think you'd, I personally think you'd be a little bit challenged to see if you had a copy of server 2016 and a copy of server 2019 in front of you, how long it would take for you to tell the difference. Mm-hmm. 2.38 p.m., Ziggy Ike. I just bought Mike's CompTIA Plus book, 10th edition, and I want to take the exams. Do I have to learn all the book, or is there a way out? Ah, I love these questions. IT is a place where those who lack passion probably ought to consider alternative career choices. Uh, like, for example, with Alice Potsy talking about inside, outside, global, local as a way to look at that. Even though it has nothing to do with any of the CompTIA courses, I'm just fascinated because I don't run into terminology that I don't know very often. So Alice did a good job. And because I have passion, I'm going to re research this just because I think it's going to be interesting as I'll get out. When provided a body of knowledge to study, you've got a lot of choices. The, the trick is, is what do you need to know to pass an exam versus what do you need to know to become a good technician? Uh, I, Mike Myers, popular author, I like to really concentrate on both of those things very much. And especially in my hardcover books, I'll have like, I'll break every chapter up into three pieces. Uh, well, not every chapter, most of them. There'll be a historical conceptual, there'll be a test specific, and then there'll be a beyond A+, beyond net plus, whatever. So you can just concentrate on that center area. But there's a reason I put that stuff in there. It's, I'm not putting it in there because I get paid by the word, I don't, or by the pound. I put that stuff in there, the historical conceptual and the beyond because I think it's important for you to become a good tech by learning this information. Uh, I, I can't imagine personally a situation where I want to learn just enough. That's where practice questions come into play. Um, if, if you were using, for example, my practice questions, you wouldn't see very many questions that were from the historical conceptual part of uh, my books just maybe a few but not too many because that reading or watching the videos that's where you learn that information but it's not really on the test so i don't put them on the practice exams so i guess the easier way for me to answer your question is get practice questions uh, we sell them uh, you probably ought to if you have my book you probably ought to get the practice questions because it ties on a chapter by chapter basis but there's lots of other folks out there who sell great practice questions uh, and uh, 
that would be the criteria of what you would need to know. So no, you do not have to know the whole book. I wrote it and I don't know the whole book, but there are a lot of important concepts in there that I think one should be aware of. And you would use practice questions to make sure that you were familiar with that. Looking for questions because I always hate missing questions. Even with Scott. <laughs> Jason Helms volunteering to send me an email to cheer me up. Thanks, buddy. Sal Sepulveda, sorry Sal, I don't mean to maul your name there, 242. Uh, Mike, I just wanted to say thank you, oh man, thank you for the great training material you put out, taking your A+, plus, net plus, and security pluses, passing the exams flawlessly, I owe my career to you. Sal, send a check for $50,000 to Mike Myers, care of Total Seminars, Chicago 60609. But seriously, Sal, congratulations, thank you for the support, and uh, I hope you're making tons of money, and you'll remember me when you're the president of Microsoft. <laughs> so, Mark, you found the answer on the virtual box forums? That's wacky. You know, the, uh, the sound thing with the Macs, the, those types of solutions always crack me up. As long as it works, right? 2.44 p.m., Angel Thresh. Good afternoon. I feel like I'm drowning in an IT program. How do you recommend learning the info for certs for someone who has no IT experience? One step at a time, Angel. You know, I mean, uh, you get these big cram courses. You know, I, I don't know anything about this IT program you're in. I think it's very frustrating that there are IT programs out there that are like, let's just stick with A plus for a minute. Uh, depending here in the United States, we have public schools, we have private schools uh, that will as little as 80 hours of study time in a course as much as 800 hours in other courses. There is no perfect law that says how much time does it take the average person to learn this stuff. Uh, for me, it's generally about for somebody who had no experience whatever, uh, they were a good user. They know how to start a computer and they can click a mouse. Be about 220 hours of study is my own personal experience on that. Uh, you can add to that, you can take away from it based on your own personal skill sets. Uh, Angel, if you feel you're drowning, then don't be afraid to drown a little bit. Um, don't be afraid of, of that fire hose, fire hose hitting you that hard. Probably the number one way that you can show yourself that you have comfort on a particular topic is that if you can take, well, always, if, if you can teach somebody else that topic, that's always good. Uh, if you can practically do whatever that is in such a way, um, whether it be running command line commands, setting up a wireless network, or, you know, I don't know what kind of IT program you're in, you just say IT. Uh, how do you recommend learning the info for certs? Okay, so the other thing, for any certification, not just mine, there's always three tools that work. Number one, there's gonna be practice questions. Number two, there's gonna be a book. And number three, there's gonna be a video. Some people are more book readers than video watchers. Some people are more video watchers than book readers. The most important thing is the practice questions. So what you do is you start watching some kind of video uh, or if you're in an IT program with an instructor, I, I'm assuming you're using study materials, training materials. Uh, so you go through that stuff and you learn it in whatever methodology you use. Some people like books and highlighters and some people watch videos and take notes or you're doing something where you're paying attention. Um, 
if you have questions, especially if you're in an IT program with an instructor, never, ever, ever let a term go by you that you don't understand. This is why most people say they're drowning is, well, either A, they're, they're, they're learning everything, but they're just being swamped with new information, which can be a problem, but they're still understanding everything. They just haven't had time to reinforce it. And the other, the other, only other reason when I hear someone say they're drowning is because they've been hit with terms and they don't know what the heck anybody's talking about. Uh, do not ever allow anybody to teach you using terms that you don't clearly understand. Uh, I try really, really hard not to do that. That's my, my big thing is to make sure that in my training materials, every topic, every term, every definition builds on stuff you already know. That's not to say I couldn't miss one from time to time. Oh, thank you, Scott. It was Barbara Andrews is, does the Active Directory with Windows Server 2016. It's, a, it's, it's great. So, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. so and Angel, the other thing you can do, my friend, is come here. Come online on Mondays and Wednesdays and, and have some questions lined up. Um, we run for two hours, but sometimes we're shorter than that. So we're, we're always looking for more people with more questions. So feel free to bring them on, man. Scott Jernigan, Santa suits for the win. I've got some killer Santa suits. Okay, here's a quick story. Uh, Scott Jernigan lives in this lovely part of Houston called the Heights. And uh, every year in the Heights, they have, traditionally have this thing called Lights in the Heights. And, you know, people decorate their houses up and they, some people have bands. Scott Jernigan's house looks unreal. It's Let's just say Scott Jernigan believes in the power of Christmas and, uh, and people, and it's very popular. People are walking around. So I'm wearing, for some reason, I'm wearing my nice Santa costume. It's a very nice Santa costume. And I'm, I've got a cerveza. And all of a sudden, this little uh, Cindy Lou Who, this little tiny two-year-old girl, blonde hair, blue eyes. You know, the little girls do the hair thing where it's like sticking straight up. I mean, this is like the cutest little kid you've ever seen in your life. And I'm a few beers down, okay? And this little kid comes walking up to me. He's like, Santa! Friends, if you want to learn a way to go from a little drunk to completely stone-cold sober in one second, put on a nice Santa suit and have a two-year-old look at you with her big, big blue eyes and go, Santa! And I was like, okay, I'm Santa. So I put the little girl on, on my knee and her parents are right there and her stroller and they're all telling me what to, you know, they're, you know, they're yelling, they're kind of mouthing it over the little girl, what, what she's getting for Christmas. And it's fine. I like kids. No big deal. In the two minutes I stood, sat there on some complete stranger's uh, porch at getting what this little girl wants for Christmas, I was surrounded. I was corralled by 30 or 40 strollers. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I sat there for a solid hour. Just one kid after the next, man. It was, it was hilarious. Yeah. Scott Jernigan, do you remember that story of any chance? Yeah, it was a few years ago. Jamie Leon, 246. Mike, any tips on answering port questions on the A+. Had a hard time uh, recently, even though I've been memorizing. Well, I'll tell you one thing you can do, Jamie, that people don't do with ports. Uh, first of all, uh, Scott Jernigan, do we still have that uh, cheat sheet that somebody made for us for all the port numbers? Uh, Jamie, I'm gonna see if we can get you the, we, we've got a list somewhere and uh, if it's online, okay, Scott, Jamie, watch the uh, links. John, uh, Scott Jernigan's going to put a link for it. It's this nice little cheat sheet. But the big thing that people should do more than anything else is play with these port numbers a little bit. Okay, so you have to learn that uh, remote desktop protocol is port th uh, 3389. Well, light up remote desktop. 
and then run netstat, 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 netstat. Or uh, alternatively, I haven't talked about this for a while, so I guess we can bring this up again. Hang on a minute. Um, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming back to me. Hang on, hang on. I'm, I'm getting. I'm, I'm about to get you something you guys are going to like. There we go. Let me make sure this works. Okay, so what I want you guys to do is uh, you can go to. Here, I'm just going to put the link in the. All you have to do is go to sysinternals, but it, it redirects you to this link. Oh, cool tools. Thanks, guys. So we got two links there. Scott just sent the link for the port number cheat sheet, and then I just sent you a link for a tool. Actually, a lot of tools. It's called sysinternals. It's uh, Mark, Re Mark Ravinovich. I can never remember his last name. Anyway, this guy's written a thousand amazing utilities. If you go to that link that I just... Uh, post it up in the chat, be prepared to lose about two hours of your life because the sysinternals folks and Mark have written all these amazing utilities, zillions of them, and they're all fun to use. And uh, you, you'll learn a lot about ports by messing with them. In particular, though, the one I want you to get a hold of is called TCP View. So it hasn't been updated for a while, and it doesn't need to be. It works great. Uh, I'm trying to send you here. I'll just send you this straight link to it. It's called TCP View, and it's wonderful little tool. It's basically Netstat, but graphical. And uh, it's just a great job showing all the connections on your system and who you're connected to and stuff. But th what's important is that you can see all the ports working for a living. And that's actually pretty cool. You know, just, y you don't want to mess with remote desktop? Fire, just connect to eBay or something like that, and you'll see that you got HTTPS connections. Uh, set up an FTP server. Connect to a, ma a mail server using an actual client like Outlook or Thunderbird. And get to actually see all these connections. That's what really makes ports more, make more sense to me is because I can actually see them in action. Uh, I never think it's a good idea to just raw memorizing them. Once again, I'm looking for questions. Lots of questions. I think I got this. Uh, 2.48 p.m. Home PC 77, PC 77. Hi, Mike. The A Plus consists of two modules, 1001 and 1002. Do you purchase one exam voucher or two? You buy two. So you can get discount vouchers from folks like me, but we don't give that big of a discount. The other thing you can do, Home PC 77, PC 77, is that Many schools, uh, here in the U.S., it's mainly public schools. I know in the U.K. they do this, too. But CompTIA offers dramatic discounts for folks who want to, but you have to be associated with a school somehow. Uh, and, but they can give you very, very deep discounts, like in excess of 60% off. Uh, the last thing we could do is... Do we still, Scott Jernigan, is, uh, did CompTIA still give us that good deal on vouchers? It's not quite as good of a deal as if you can get their educational discount, but uh, you have to be associated with the school, though. Is Scott Jernigan, can you check that up for me? So hang on, Home PC 77 see if we can get you another link. Otherwise, if you're like the rest of us penguins, you 
hustle up and get a discount voucher from folks like us. We sell discount vouchers. Uh, 2.48 p.m. How are we doing? Man, I'm getting behind again. Connor Wellman, Mike, after getting the A+, I'm very interested in algorithms. Are we talking about IT security algorithms? Is there good IT security? Would you recommend that deals with algorithms, or does this get too far into computer science? It gets way into computer science, man. Uh, there is no certification that I'm aware of that really goes into what I think you're asking for. Like, how does AES work? Algorithm? kind of a thing. Um, I'm not aware of any certification that does that. Isn't say there isn't, but that is usually where you're going to a four-year school to dig into that kind of stuff. Tolowitz sleeps with Mike's book under my pillow. <laughs> it's osmosis. Yeah, I mean, you know, we look at we look at our books all the time and say, you know, are are we saying the right thing? And you know, I, McGraw Hill would love for me to write a book that was three pages long, you know. Uh, but uh, I, I feel that what I put in the books is right and proper and sufficient for. Remember, there's four things that I'm going to put in a book. Number one, is it going to help you pass the exam? Number two, is it going to make you a good tech? Ready for the next two? Uh, number three, it's because it's cool. Sometimes I put stuff in there just because it's interesting, and I'll usually set those as asides or, you know, uh, tech tips or things like that. And then number four, this is the weird one. I have to teach people things that they don't need to know. Because if I try to teach, if I try to just skip over something and not talk about it at all, people get very, very crabby at me. So I always have to put in little bits of things about stuff that you don't really need to know. Uh, PRML storage for rotational media drives. Uh, I'm trying to think of some others quickly off the top of my head. Uh, oh, uh, like pipelining. You, there, there's no way people would understand hyperthreading unless you understand pipelining, threads, and processes. Not on the exam, but you need to know it. Okay, you don't need to know it. I need to show you that you don't need to know it. Eh, maybe that's not a good example. I'm going to think about that one for a minute. Uh, 2.52 p.m. Rich Reed. Hey, Mike. Did you get a chance to use every edition of Microsoft Windows 1.0 till present? Yes. I've used every version of Windows. Uh, not necessarily when they came out. I really didn't get into Windows until Windows for, uh, not even, yes, yeah, regular Windows for Workgroups 3.0 or Windows 3.0. So late 80s. Uh, I went back and grabbed earlier copies and still have them of uh, all the other versions of Windows. I have almost all of them still in the box, too. Uh, 252, Jean M. Satouts, or Jean, are you going to have a new series on Udemy for the new CompTIA Security Plus? Yes, I am. But, Jean, at this point in the game, we're not going to need it until July. Uh, the new Security Plus is coming out, but as I always tell people, Never take the new exam. Never, ever, ever take the new exam. Nobody's ever going to ask you which exam you took. They're just going to ask you if you got Security Plus. Uh, when, a, when a new exam comes out, we don't have any more information than you guys have. We just get it earlier. Uh, and uh, the, the worst time to take any certification, not just CompTIA, but any certification, is the moment a new exam comes out for anything, for for. A minimum of three, but more like six months, all the training materials are garbage, including mine. Now, luckily, I can go through and I can update my test banks as we learn more about the exam. I can put some changes in videos, but there's very little I can do about books. So uh, that's why my books are always, I don't know, what's the word I'm looking for? Maybe I do a little bit more than I should in the books, but uh, 
Yeah, I don't. I, 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 I when the secure when we're ready to get it out, and we're, for the record, we're working like crazy on it right now, and have been for the last few months. But Corona has really messed us up, just like everybody else. Krampus Dumpling, hey Mike, you said earlier you failed about one third of your certs. What certs have you taken? All of them. I don't know Krampus. Hey, everybody, people always ask me that question. I've taken a lot of certs. Krampus Dumpling, get a study group. They are so useful. They are useful. I've just found that it's harder and harder to get people to socialize anymore. Not just COVID, I mean just nerddom in general. Hello, kitty cat that it's, uh, it's a challenge to get them. But if you, you know, if you could get a study group together, that's always a, a great idea. Uh, 2.55 p.m., Miyoshi82X. Hey, Mike, your books were the ones that got me through A plus and Net plus. I also have Security Plus. Are there any noteworthy CompTIA cert exams to get? Well, if you're going Security Plus, you might want to take a look at the CYSA plus and the CASP. But once you get there, I know CompTIA doesn't want me to say this, but in all probability, uh, or Pentest Plus, Pentest Plus is really coming along. It seems that the Pentest Plus is putting, uh, oh man, what's their name? Super famous Pentest certification, been around forever. Uh, certified ethical hacker, thank you, Scott. Uh, that uh, people are considering the pen test plus to be more challenging than the certified ethical hacker. So who to thunk it? But to me, you know, once you get past maybe that stuff, you really ought to be looking at starting your Cisco path, starting your Microsoft path, you know, going into uh, uh, ISAC squared, uh, uh, ISC squared, or, or whatever you want. You know, CompTIA is pushing out of the entry level world, but they've still got a ways to go. Jason Helms, 2.56 p.m. Okay, Mike, I'm having a bit of a problem grasping what uh, I, 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 oh, I, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. And what are examples of them? Okay, we can do that. Da -da -ba -da. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, let's take a look at something. Okay, so for starters, da -da 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 -da. see if I can do this without blowing up my computer. Okay, so first one is going to be uh, infrastructure as a service. So probably one of the best examples of that is AWS from Amazon. And you just go to aws.com and you can, uh, you have to create an account and you got to put a credit card on there, but you don't have to spend any money. Infrastructure as a service basically means your most basic form of cloud computing. What you're doing is you're using someone else's infrastructure, but you, they, you pay them every month. Now, Amazon's smart that they have like their lowest, most simple uh, machines you can dial up for free so you can play with them. So infrastructure as a service means you're going to, you're going to go onto AWS, you're going to create a virtual machine, it's a cloud machine. A virtual machine that's far away from you is a cloud. And you're going to spin it up. It's going to say, how much RAM do you want? How much storage do you want? What operating system do you want to put on here? Uh, you can get Linux for free. Windows costs you money. And uh, you just go click, 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 bonk, and it's running. You have a functional, public-facing server. That's what infrastructure as a service is. Um, the challenge... Uh, hang on. I want to get the next one ready. All right. The challenge for a lot of people is that a lot of people who make public-facing servers are programmers, and they don't really care much about, you know, what type of operating system or how much RAM. They just want to write their code, and then they want to send that code up to the server and run it. Uh, in that case, then we start moving to things that are called platform as a service. So here would be one example as platform as a service. 
Uh, this is called Heroku. And uh, this is another one you should sign up for. And uh, what you do is you get on their uh, platform and the platform hides all of the infrastructure from you, okay? The infrastructure is still there, but what Heroku does is goes, look, man, just give me your code and we'll shove it up there for you. And you don't really say how much RAM or what kind of operating system you want. It's, it's uh, you can say, it's basically you have a dial and it says, I need more power, you know, that kind of a thing. So infrastructure as a service asks you, you know, how many servers do you want? Where do you want the service to be? What operating system? How much RAM? Blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. Heroku just says, give me your code and I'll help you develop your code, okay? So platform as a service makes a lot of the infrastructure invisible to the user. Isn't that surprising? You know, most programmers, they don't care about what version of Linux they're running. They just want to run their new, you know, all of us game or whatever it might be. Okay, what was the last one? Uh, software, oh, software as a service is the easiest one. Software as a service is any kind of software out there that's running and ready to go. Uh, Google Docs. Uh, anytime you get on Google Docs and start typing into the word processor, that's a piece of software that's offered as a service. Uh, in fact, I could argue that the Google search engine page, good old www.google.com, is software as a service. What you get for that software is search capabilities, which is a service. And in particular, that one's free. Gmail is a, another example. Uh, so all of those would be software as a service. So infrastructure as a service, things like AWS, where you have to actually spin up the machine, set the operating system, all that kind of a thing. Platform as a service, uh, Heroku is a good example, although they're certainly not the only ones out there who obscure all of the infrastructure and they just go, here's our platform, give us your code, boom, here's your URL, have fun. And then software as a service is the end product, which users will take advantage of. Does that help? Looking for questions. Toloit, you're on a roll today, brother. People, I don't remember uh, that that uh, ports list was given to us by. Uh, a user, we tweaked it up a little bit, but uh, Krampus Dumpling, uh, 3.02 p.m. Hey, Mike, I have passed my network plus, but I do remember the most annoying thing was port numbers and what port does TCP or UDP? Oh, yeah, oh. There, are, there are a few in there, man. Oh, thank you, Scott. 3.03, Scott Jurgen mentioned that we did have a nice ports discussion back on April 30th. And uh, he gave you the link. You can watch that one. Tolwit and Dave Rush, I want to put you guys on a Zoom thing and just listen to you all talk at each other. Connor Wellman, the educational discount is $103 versus $230. Okay, Connor, I'm going to trust you on that. I, I don't remember what the exact numbers are. Elaine Batzer. Hey, Elaine, how's it going? 3.06 p.m. What do you know about the Google IT cert? Is it any good? Uh, yeah, I've looked into it. Is it any good? I think it's pretty light. Does it compare to A+, not in my opinion. I have been meaning to look at it more. It's, uh, the price is great for it, but uh, is uh, I, I'm not a big fan. Uh, 3.09 p.m. Call Paul Canbeer. Hi, Mike. I like the vids. They're well explained and you're funny, so it sticks. Thank you. 
Uh, so it certainly works for me. Keep it. Ah, thanks, man. There you go. I will, Paul. I'll keep it up, man. I'll keep going until the last day of... <laughs> I always tell people, they're like, Mike, when are you going to retire? And I go, well, you'll know I'll retire because we'll be like chatting online using text. And all of a sudden, you're going to see the letter J, 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 because that's where my nose is going to land on the keyboard. Hell, I retired 25 years ago, kids. Okay, Dave Rush developed the ports list. Sorry, Dave, didn't mean to take your... Scott, did someone say our study materials are garbage? I would like to speak to that person, please. Oh, oh, no, not, I, not garbage in that way. That's not what I meant. Scott's like, you did. I was like, I, I don't remember anything I say. Looking for questions. Not a D. Fishing for compliments. Your materials are great. Nerddom moved online. Join us. Absolutely. Oh, uh, just so you guys know, uh, there is a Discord group. Uh, Krampus was talking about a study group. This might be, for those of you who aren't sure where to go, an excellent resource. Uh, it's just coming off the ground now, but uh, it is a Discord channel. Uh, I'll probably be on there today. Uh, it seems to happen after my Monday and Wednesday talks, but uh, it is not affiliated with Total Seminars. It is not endorsed by Mike Myers, though at this point er, I, I'd probably not be afraid to endorse it. But uh, Scott, could you be a pal if you haven't already and put the link up for the Discord channel? Uh, please consider uh, joining the Discord channel. Uh, a lot of good folks in there, a lot of scary folks, but in general... Uh, if you're looking for more of a two-way conversation, especially outside of uh, the four hours a week that I'm helping out, you should very seriously consider the Discord channel. And I know my buddy Scott has got that already put up, so I'm not even going to worry. Kevin Lopez. I am working on making a virtual machine Windows Server 2016 lab and find that I'm very limited. I can do with only 8 gigabytes of RAM. Ooh. Yeah. You're very limited. Um, yeah, sorry, bud. You need 16 on the host machine just to even consider running server. Kick it up, man. Go buy yourself some more RAM. Schlep it in there. Uh, 313, Benzilla 129. Hello, everyone. Tuning in on my lunch break. Hello, Benzilla. Welcome. 313, Renika Davis. I am interested in getting to the IT field, but I would like to go straight into cybersecurity. Do I have to study A plus as well? Renika, you don't have to. So, Renika, why do you want to get into cybersecurity? Okay. For somebody who knows nothing to want to go into security, my question would be, what motivated you to do that? To me, understanding the core concepts of what makes our systems work is important. Uh, so I'll tell you, you could probably skip A+, but I would not skip Network+. Plus. For someone, you, you, have to under, you have to have the basic understanding. It's like uh, teaching somebody how to play chess. <clears throat> and I'll sit here and go, here's the pawn, here's the rook, here's the queen, here's the bishop. And like, I don't want to know any of that stuff. Just show me how to checkmate. And it's like, eh, yeah. So, Renika, I'm not saying no to anything that you're talking about. But if you want to get to anything serious about IT security, I, I would start with a Network Plus. Also, Renika, keep in mind that we do have uh, some wonderful videos that we did about two months ago on entry-level IT security jobs. You might want to check that one out. You can do a search on the Total Seminars channel. Entry-level IT security. Because they are hiring. Do 
You guys are just going on and on about electric cars here. You guys, you have no idea how long Scott Jernigan has been touting electric cars. Long time. Now you guys are talking about... Oh. Andre, my favorite Netherlands dude, talking about 50 caliber machine gun. Oh, God. Dude. <laughs> Krampus Dumpling, go download more RAM. Hey, Tolowit, you've got competition for funniest guy on the channel. Project Draven, just got home. What did I miss? Nothing yet. I'm just ask, answering questions. It's almost 3.30. No, 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 no. We should have a competition today. Let's give away some practice questions. What do you guys say, huh? Da, da, da. I'm just deciding what are we going to do for practice questions. Let's do, let's do Network Plus today. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in here. You guys don't mind if we do a quick little competition, do you? And it's not going to be port numbers either. I'm scrolling through our database in a raw format, so it's a little bit more challenging. One of these days I'll get my act together and have this stuff ready for y'all. come up with something that's a little bit simpler. Oh, that would be a tricky one. Sorry guys, I got myself in a weird spot, I'm just trying to fix it. Okay, we're gonna let me do a couple more questions and we'll do and we'll we'll throw in a quick competition. You guys in the port numbers. Kevin Lopez, 329. What is more important in pen testing, the RAM or the GPU, or is it both equally important? I wouldn't even think like that. The most important thing for pen testing is your brain. So you're talking about a pen testing system? Probably it would be the RAM. Even in that case, most of the pen testing tools I'm familiar with don't require a whole lot in terms of hardware. In fact, on Friday, Dave Rush is going to be setting up a Kali Linux box on a Raspberry Pi. And if that doesn't tell you anything right there, that's a clue right there in terms of firepower. I wouldn't be particularly concerned about that. Rosemary Pottinger, 327. Hi, I'm new here. I am so late. Rosemary, you are so late. 
but you're not too late for a competition, Rosemary. Uh, 326 p.m., Cole Landreth. Hi, Mike. Would love to tap your brain. Ooh, there's a tap away. I'm about to take my 1,002 on the 25th, thanks to you, okay? If I end up passing becoming A plus certified, what would you recommend doing? Security plus or net plus next? I like network plus. I really, really like network plus. I tell everybody, uh, Cole, network plus is the most important certification you'll never need. <laughs> it has so much great core information. Uh, if you pass a network plus, I can look at you in the eye and know that you have a pretty good conceptualization of uh, how to do most of the core stuff on the network. So I, I would say network plus. All right. Looks like we're kind of running low on the questions here. Whoop. Uh, 3.31 p.m. Sam Showalter. Any suggestions on platforms that have a good program for teaching LDAP? Do you know what? You actually want to study LDAP. Uh, I'd be curious, what do you want to study on LDAP? You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, if you want to do LDAP, spin yourself up an Active Directory machine and, you know, to start messing with users or computers or anything else you want. We, uh, Sam, we actually showed people how you can get a free copy of Windows Server and all that stuff <clears throat> and set it up as a virtual machine and use it as a, a lab. I guess you'd have to say, what do I want to know about LDAP? And if you say everything, I'm going to stab you through the computer. Um, 3.31 p.m., Financial Man. <laughs> Financial man. Hello, Mike. First time here. Long time listener. First time. Um, going through test out CompTIA A and network security and CEH. Excellent. Good luck. <coughs> I'm better than test out. <coughs> I'm a lot <coughs> better in test it out and cheaper <coughs> too. <coughs> oh, you know me, Patricia. I'm, I'm a violent person. Home PC 77. It's 1130 in South Africa. Time to get some sleep. Cheers, home PC. Sure you don't want to stay for the competition? We're going to start it right now. Mm -mm -mm. How do I get out of this thing? Ah, there it is. All right, here we go. Let us compete. All right, so I want to find... Ooh, here's a good basic question. You guys ready? Here we go. Okay, so here's how the competitions work, folks. You, whoever writes down the first answer, or at least close enough for me to think that it's the right answer, wins. These are multiple choice questions, but I'm going to try to not actually give you the answers. I'm picking more simple questions so that you, hopefully you'll be able to pull this off right off the top of your head. You guys ready? Here we go. Everybody ready? Here we go. Hyper-threading. Hilarious. <coughs> what networking hardware device allows you to connect multiple hosts into a single broadcast domain? What is the name of the box that allows us to connect multiple devices into a single broadcast domain? Oopsie. Sorry, Jack. Mm -mm. Into a single broadcast domain. There we go. Bart Konitsky is the winner. It's a switch, guys. First of all, a big round of applause to Bart. Congratulations, sir. What you have won today is your choice of either uh, A+, plus, Network+, plus, or Superiority+, plus, plus questions. In or Bart, in order for you to receive your prize... You have to send an email to, you ready? Kathy with a K, Kathy Y, K A T H Y Y at totalsem.com. Tell her that you won the Mike's, uh, the competition, Mike's live stream AMA, and just tell her which one you want access to. They're totally online. And uh, 
I believe Kathy's giving 90 days of, uh, of free practice questions. So congratulations to you, sir. You did great. Congratulations. Okay, that was fun. Let's do it again. Let's do one more, and then we're going we're gonna to wrap it up. Unless more questions start showing up. Okay, uh, Sam, thanks for developing this. S studying how it works with Active Directory. They, they, LDAP works automatically underneath everything. I'm unfamiliar with a situation where knowledge of LDAP is going to help you with Active Directory. You use the tool sets provided by Microsoft, unless they're doing some kind of specialized queries or something like that. Uh, I, I, that's all I got for you. And uh, Elaine, thank you for agreeing me, with me on test out. I, I look, there's lots of competing products out there from fine uh, competitors of mine, um, uh, and uh, there's literally the only one that I will cut down because I don't feel people can successfully pass CompTIA exams. And that is those guys. That's my opinion. Tolowit, does turning on, this is 3.33 p.m., does turning on virtualization on a PC reserve any resources when you are not using it? No, no, everything's, uh, I guess the virtual machine, when it's turned off, takes up some space on your storage, but that would be about it. No, it doesn't reserve anything. In fact, it doesn't really reserve it when you're using it, other than RAM, I guess. Uh, everything else is uh, time sliced. Uh, Bert Koniski, Bart. Hi, Mike. Does A plus include PowerShell? If so, do you teach it anywhere? Uh, yeah, uh, Bart. Uh, uh, A plus definitely includes PowerShell, and we had some episodes on it. Uh, we were actually going way beyond what A plus did, and I kind of stopped because I was so far out in the gators. But we have some videos here that talk about applets and commandlets and uh, file name extensions. The questions that you're going to see on PowerShell are very rudimentary. So Bart, the answer is yes, I do. All of my products teach PowerShell. All of my A plus products teach PowerShell. And we have some free videos right here at uh, the Total Seminars channel. Double checking for questions. Sam, I never used raw LDAP queries against an Active Directory, so I, I'm not familiar with that, and I apologize. We've got another competition coming, folks. Uh, Pro Funk Music, what's the difference between the 901... Well, we, since there's two exams, 901 and 902, and now there's the 1001, 1002, the terminology you use, what's it just doing the 90X versus the 1000X? Uh, there's some pretty profound differences. And uh, can you study 901 and go for it? You can go for it. I just don't know what your chances of success are. I'd say there's about a 20% across the board change in... Uh, the two things. So yeah, then I know you probably means you got 901 study materials, but I'd still, and, and honestly, uh, I'm good on money. I don't need to force you to buy something new, but in this case, you probably would want to. Mm -mm -mm. Tolo and Andre, I skipped so many of your thing. Contest boilerplate, what is that? Mm -mm. All right, let's do another competition. 
I'm going to stick with Network Plus. That's, those are good questions. Ooh. You guys ready? Here we go. It's a one-word answer. All right, let me get ready because I have a feeling this is going to be quick. All right, so look, guys, if you've already won today, just watch. Be nice, okay? Be fair. All right, so here we go. What popular authentication protocol is used in Microsoft Windows domains is most likely to need an NTP server? Nancy Tom Paul. What protocol is it? Rich Reed, it is not MS Chap. Which protocol needs the time server? It's an authentication protocol. Come on, Alan. TCP is a transport protocol. Rich Reed, now we're talking. All right, Kerberos, good man. Okay, folks, yeah, Kerberos requires a net, network time protocol server. Anybody who's ever worked with a domain controller and a client, if they're not time is like within a few seconds of each other, you can't even log in. That's an A-plus question right there. Uh, but anyway, so Rich Reed, uh, congratulations to you, sir. You have won your choice of any of our practice questions. There's more than A-plus, Net-plus, Security-plus, IT Fundamentals, CASP. You've got a bunch of them in there. All you have to do is send an email to Kathy Y, that's Kathy with a K, K-A-T-H-Y-Y at totalsem.com. Tell her that you were a winner today and tell her access, which access you want. And uh, Scott Jernigan has put all the information right there for you, Rich, so that you can collect your filthy lucre. Well done, sir. All right, that was fun. Let's see if we got any more questions. Scott, have I missed anybody today? Uh, Sarah Muhammad, do I have to A plus before I get security plus? No, but I'd recommend it. You don't have to take any exam before. Uh, CompTIA has no prerequisites. You can go take a CASP right now if you want to. You'll fail without that basic knowledge behind it. But you know, you don't even have to buy any training materials. All you have to do is pay for the exam and show up on time. Wouldn't recommend doing that. But there are no, you can do anything you want. Go crazy. All right, it is almost quarter till. It looks like things are quieting down. You guys want to do one more competition? Type in yes or no. Somebody tell me, you want to do one more before we call it a day? Alan wants to, Connor wants to, Elbow wants to. All right, here we come, here we come. All right, last one. I'm doing this just for Karan Franklin, whose name I don't recognize. Sam Showalter, he did it in binary, good man. Uh, Cole Landreth, what's the most difficult problem you had to solve in the field? Yeah. God, yeah, Cole, you, uh, buy me some martinis. We can talk about that for hours. I can't think of one off the top of my head. All right, let me pull up, let me get another Network Plus question. Ooh, this is a classic Network Plus question. You guys ready? You guys ready? It's a one word answer. I'm just seeing. Corinne, don't get mad at me. I just saw your name. It's a cool name. I wanted to say it. Okay, here we go, guys. You ready? What Windows command line utility allows you to query DNS servers? What Windows command line utility allows you to query a DNS server? Okay, we got a winner. Frank, there's a name I easy to remember. Absolutely, it's NS Lookup. Folks, <coughs> both the A plus and the Net plus really hammer NS Lookup as a utility, and you should definitely be familiar with it.
Connor, I would almost allow Dig, except Dig is not a Windows utility. So, unless they put it in recently. Now I'm paranoid. Hang on. Okay. Whew. Okay. There's still no Dig in Windows. All right. So, Frank, you're the winner. Frank, you have won. I'm pretty sure it's a 90-day access to any of the practice test banks that Total Seminars offers. In order to claim your prize, all you have to do is go to Kathy Y at totalsem.com, tell her that you're one of the winners, and tell her which one you want access to. So they actually just use your email. That's why you've got to send Kathy an email if you're a winner, because your email is your logon. So that's how we do that stuff. And Frank, Scott Jernigan has put the information in there so that you know how to do it. It's right there for you. All right, but we did have a couple more questions. All right, guys. That's it for the uh, uh, th that's it for the competition. Uh, also, do keep in mind if you didn't win, we still offer a 50% discount on all of our total seminars uh, practice questions. Uh, all you have to do is go to www.totalsem.com, head over to our merchant area, load that card up with tons of fat loot, and before you check out, use the code. Oh, I forgot it again already. Scott Jernigan is going to type it in. Where'd it go? I've lost it. You type in the code NOV092020 and Scott Jernigan will put it up there for you. Uh, so those of you who aren't winning, we still offer outrageous discounts. Uh, I think it's down to about $2 and some navel lint or something like that. Okay. Also do keep in mind, guys, that uh, after this, I'm going to be diving over at the Total Seminars. Uh, sorry, not the Total Seminars. Who who set up, Scott, who set up the... Uh, I am just going blank. Somebody save me. Jose did. Thank you. The Discord channel. Thank you for reading my mind. Did a lot of drugs in the 60s, kids. Jose Draven. So Jose Draven is the administrator of this. I, I'm just, uh, I show up. This is the unofficial Discord channel, and I'm going to be over there answering more detailed questions. Uh, be warned, it's not nearly as politically correct. Uh, it's a little bit crazier, um, and, uh, but it is uh, not affiliated with Total Seminars in any way, shape, or form, other than I like to drop in and say hello and you are welcome to join us as well. All right, Discord. Thank you, Kevin Lopez, for reading my mind. You did good. It's the cat. I'm going to blame the cat. All right. All right, so I think that that's just about all we've got for today. Too much LDS. Well done, Toloit. Let me double check, make sure I didn't miss any questions. I think we got them all. All right. Oh, sorry, 3.44 p.m., Benzilla, 129, Mike Myers. After taking A+, plus, should I take Network or Security Plus next? I always think Network Plus. What's the most difficult problem you had to solve in the field? <laughs> uh, it wasn't IT, but it had to do with alligators. And it was out in the field. That's going to need a couple of beers before I tell that story. All right. It looks like I've got all the questions answered. Scott Jernigan, have I done okay, brother? Scott isn't responding. Oh, here he is. I'll just make sure I haven't missed anybody. I wouldn't say I was missing them, Bob. Okay, cool. We got everything. Boy, Scott Jernigan, you were... Uh, Amazing today. All right. Well, folks, it's time to go. Ugh. So me and Jack are going to say bye. Say bye, Jack. Bye. All right. Yeah, you're useless. Folks, I will be back next Monday at 2 o'clock Central Standard Time with uh, AMA. And we are going to be talking about NAT and outside, inside, global, and local addresses and sparse mode and dense mode just because my buddy Alice asked those questions. By golly, we're going to answer them even though they're not. It's still good technology. I love to talk about technology as a whole. 
Also keep in mind this Friday at two o'clock, uh, Dave Rush is going to be teaching you how to use, install Kali Linux on a Raspberry Pi. So if you're interested in being a pen tester, you want to talk about a cheap pen testing system, that is definitely something you'd want to tune into. Um, we've got some guest speakers coming up again, finally. I think I've finally got Robin and Abernathy to show up. And people want Jessica Dickerson back to talk about jobs. So I'm thinking about we'll bring Jessica back uh, one more time as well. So that'll be uh, probably Wednesday of next week. And then it'll be the next week I'll have Robert Abernathy. So we got a lot of stuff going on here, folks. Please stay connected. This is a great time to uh, have me around. Keep in mind, as COVID begins to fade out, we may stop doing these uh, AMAs. So take advantage. Make hay while the sun shines, kids. So as we always say, once we hit this part of the day, Folks, it's been great, but it is time to go. I'll see you over in the Discord channel in about 15, 20 minutes. And uh, other than that, this is your little Uncle Mikey saying good night. Good night.